Welcome to another Prairie Adventures. I'm Corlaine Gardner with the Interpretive Program. We're usually based in Police Point Park. We love to tell you stories about the plants and the animals and the people of southeastern Alberta. The Interpretive Program deals with all sorts of subjects in our events and our displays, whether it's the Northwest Mounted Police that the park is named for, or the migrating snow geese, or how to snowshoe, all sorts of things. There's a never-ending list of things that we like to talk about. Lately, we've been focusing on invasive species. Now, invasive species can be plants or animals, ones that didn't grow up here, that don't belong here. Sometimes we import them as garden plants, and then they find out what a wonderful place this is, and they spread and they spread and they spread, and they start to cause problems. I'm sure we can all think of uh, examples of that. The rats, the Norway or black rats, are invasive all over the world, except in Alberta. We spend a lot of money keeping them out because they have a serious economic impact. Another one is the dandelion. Most of us don't like dandelions, but in Europe, some people grow them in their garden. A plant that is out of place without any natural controls can become a problem and that's what the invasive species are. Today we want to talk about some good news stories and some ideas of how we can all help in the battle against the invaders. Right now let's go find Valerie. She has some information about some very unusual little helpers in the battle. Let's go see where she's at. Hello. I'm going to be talking to you today about natural heroes. Yes, we have, if you're not totally surprised by this, but Albert has weeds. Yes, we have weeds. Many, many books and books of weeds that are not native to this area. And I'm talking specifically about this one. And this is called the leafy spurge. It's highly toxic. It has a sap that actually runs through the whole plant. And that sap, well, if you're in contact with the sap, you can get blisters, rashes, and if you, like some animals do, like sheep will sometimes eat these, if you eat a great abundance, it can actually lead to their death. So that's one of the reasons we want to get rid of it, because it's very poisonous, and it, it actually spreads by a long root system. It can go as much as five meters horizontally, and if it's a rocky, rocky ground, it actually goes down about nine meters. So those roots are huge, and most importantly, they will actually regenerate from just a small portion of root to grow more of them. And of course, their seeds, the seed pods, they actually are quite interesting because the seed pods, they basically explode. <laughs> and they pop open, and the seeds are thrown five meters away from the mother plant. And so you see how it reproduces so quickly. And now this is an example of one and the, you'll notice the, the pretty color on top, a nice sort of limey green color. It's very distinctive and you can usually see it from quite a distance if you're looking for this color of flower. And, and well, I'll, I'll get you a little closer view of it and you can see that there's the petals are right here on the very top. There are two little petals and then a little heart-shaped cup and then it goes down to the leaves which actually are sort of a spiral all the way around. But I was talking about heroes. Now, this, the uh, Alberta government and the Canadian government actually has brought in different things to help in controlling these. Now, the first thing I have to think of first is, is a grazing method. They actually found out that sheep and goats are very, very good at eating this leafy spurge as long as it's not a total part of their diet. They can actually quite, quite thrive on it but they have to have breaks where they're eating other things rather than leafy spurge. This helps to sort of slow, slow it down, stop it from going from one season to the next season. So that is a really a good thing. But now, biologically, we have brought in several different things. We have brought in, now this, these are very spurge-specific uh, insects, so they won't bother anything else that, that actually is in the area because they only eat the spurge plant. And I'm talking about a beautiful insect that is red 
and yellow and black. And now this is actually the third spurge moth caterpillar. They're one of the most beautiful caterpillars I've ever seen, being that bright red with the black spots. But when they're at the caterpillar stage, they will be on the plant and they'll be defoliating it. They take all the foliage off, which actually helps because the plant is actually slowed down its growth. It has to regenerate all those little, little leaves. And now, these mo and the moths for them are also very exciting looking too. They're a fairly good sized moth and they have a pink hinge to them. But the caterpillars, they're so lovely when, they're, when they first hatch out, like they, they get, the moth will lay them on the backside of a leaf of one of the spurge, leafy spurges. And then two weeks later, a little black caterpillar emerges. But now it goes through several stages. The next stage being sort of a green and black and yellow phase. But the very last phase, that's when you see the beauty of this caterpillar. That's when you see the beautiful red, white, and black. But now, this plant, actually, we have another, another insect that was introduced. Of course, they were introduced from the motherland, which would have been like in Europe or in temperate Asia. And this is called a leafy spurge flea beetle. And those little black guys, they actually work very well. They're getting, getting some really good results with those because they actually will, the, the larva, what lives under the ground, will eat the roots those long roots, they eat the roots up and they continue until, until they, they pupate. So these little beetles, they're small, but they're mighty. And we're very happy that it's helping because these plants are all over the world now. The only place they don't have them is in Australia. If you want to know more about the leafy spurge, about other noxious weeds that we have in the area, or about the biological controls, I invite you to come to the Nature Center where we will give you more information. Thanks, Valerie. It's good to know that some little black beetles and a beautiful caterpillar can help us in the battle against the leafy spurge. Biological control, which is what these little critters are called, seems like a really nice answer to some of our problems, but it's got its own challenges. It kind of reminds me of uh, the old nursery rhyme. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Do you remember how it goes? She swallowed a spider and then she swallowed a bird and it kept getting worse and worse. People who are looking for biological control of weeds have to be very careful that they don't become like that little old lady. They don't want to introduce something that then in itself becomes another pest. So research into biological control takes years and years. It's good to know that the uh, spurge caterpillar and the spurge beetles are helping in the battle. Now we're going to go up and find Sophie and Valerie who have some ideas how we can all help in the battle against the invaders. Off to you girls. On this episode of Prairie Adventures we have been talking about invasive species in the wild and in our natural environment. But what about in our homes and gardens? Could we have invasive species thriving in our very own backyards? I'm Sophie and I'm here today with Valerie Martins and Valerie knows quite a bit about gardening. So let's start off by asking, what are the dangers of having invasive species in our gardens and in our flower beds? Well, actually, Sophie, there are many. The first thing that comes to mind is the toxic, toxicity. Because the plants are, a lot of invasive plants are actually poisonous. And we know how dogs, pets, our young pets and our young children will put things in their mouths and you could develop burns or even make them very, very sick. So I would not recommend having them for that reason. And then there's also the, the fact that if you leave them unchecked, these weeds will take over your whole garden area eventually. And they can do things like they can make your, their roots will go underneath your sidewalk and make cracks in your sidewalk. And if you leave them go for too, way too long, they can even undermine into your own basement and make cracks in your foundation, which hits you right in the pocketbook. And of course, they're against the law to have on your, on your yard as well. So can you get in trouble for having invasive species on your property? Well, yes, you can. Because it's actually, is, it's, like this book says, it is against the law. 
And there are fines for different types of, of wild plants you have in your yard. It's, but it's up to you as a homeowner or an occupant of that home and yard to actually deal with these things and to know, learn your weeds. And I'll direct you to the uh, Alberta, Alberta Weed Act will explain exactly what kind you have, how you have to deal with them. And if you have more questions, we also have, there's a website called www.albertainvasivespecies.ca and they will also direct you and will be more of a help in finding out what kind of weeds you have. And of course, we're giving away these nice little brochures and you with all the information in it. So let's look at the bigger picture. If you have bad plants in your garden, can that affect the outside world as well? Well, definitely. Well, you think of it as uh, you're in your yard and you have your beautiful garden full of noxious weeds. And uh, well, your neighbors won't like the look of that for one thing. And then of course, there's the, the, the uh, thing that noxious weeds are very opportunistic. They will go by, by seed and they will fly, the seeds will fly into your neighbor's yard, the ones beside you, the ones on both sides of you, behind you, and in front of you as well. And so that makes you sort of basically the epicenter of all the weeds in the neighborhood, which makes, makes uh, you not really very popular with your neighbors. Besides, it is against the law. <laughs> yes. And what about if you have a plant that looks really beautiful? Some invasive species have really nice flowers and they look like they belong in your flower beds. But what are some safe alternatives to these plants? Well, that's a good question. And uh, the first plant I think of is the, one of the first ones in the spring is the Dame's Rocket. It's a tallish plant with kind of a purple flower and it looks a lot like a phlox. But this, but this plant actually has five petals while phlox has four. So, Get rid of those dames rocket and put in flocks instead. That's an easy, safe alternative. And then, of course, there's the creeping bellflower, another one of those evil plants that goes by rootstock. If you can eradicate it, yes. And then I would recommend a delphinium. And they come in different shades of, of to a pale blue, right up to almost a navy royal blue. And they're a taller plant and they're kind of bushy. They really add a lot of dimension to your garden. And then there's the oxized daisy. A lot of people don't really know about some of these plants being invasive, but the oxide daisy is definitely one that will take over a spot. And for those ones, I recommend you have a reg regular daisy. So when you go to your, your greenhouse or, or other place where you find plants, I would look at the more colorful varieties of daisies. Because those ones are usually hybrids and they won't spread in your yard. They have beautiful ones that have like purple, purple petals and a yellow center, or sometimes you have ones that are red on, in the center and purple ones on the outside. But they have many of those painted daisies that are quite lovely. But now my worst plant, or my worst pick is the wildflower mixes. Because, well, if you get them from any place, you have to look at the list and it will name off some of the wildflowers are in the package, but then there's the ones called others. It's the others you have to be careful for because by accident, sometimes weed seeds will get into those packages. And we don't want to be dealing with that because what happens in your wildflower garden, you throw the other seeds in, the nice ones will be good for a couple of days, or a couple, or a couple, of, a couple of years, and then what happens is the invasive species, the weeds will take over. So you're better off to actually make your own seed mixes find the actual seeds in their own seed package and take four or five of them and mix them together and then sprinkle them around your yard where you would like them. Thank you very much, Valerie. Come on down to the Nature Center and pick up one of these brochures. We have lots more to tell you about invasive plants. Back to you, Corlaine. Thanks, Sophie and Valerie. We all enjoy our, our domestic flowers and it's nice to know that we have some good alternatives to the problem-causing ones. There are other people involved in the fight against invasive species as well. And for a more official report, let's find Marty. He's in a back alley somewhere, meeting with one of our bylaw officers. Thanks, Corlaine. 
So I'm here in a back alley in Medicine Hat, and unfortunately, these areas, alleys, vacant lots, they can be reservoirs for noxious weeds to get back out into natural areas and agricultural lands and infest them. And unless they're dealt with uh, quickly and completely, this can continue to be a problem. So I'm really happy and pleased to be joined today by Community Peace Officer Barry Ann Hayward to talk a little bit more about bylaws efforts to deal with these issues. Hi Barry Ann, how are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? Thanks for joining me. No problem. So this all comes about from a recent article in the Medicine Hat News uh, detailing uh, bylaws work with weeds and unsightly yards and it was sort of the inspiration for me to contact them to, to talk, talk about this. So, uh, Barry Ann, if you would, if you could just explain briefly what the bylaw is that you're dealing with. Uh, we deal with the unsightly property bylaw. And uh, so if we come down the alley and the weeds are really high, like these ones over here, uh, we would ask the owner uh, to cut them down and take care of them and get them out of here. Okay, um, so is this a, a, a unique approach that uh, Bylaw has undertaken recently or is it pretty typical of what they've been doing? Pretty typical every summer, spring, summer. Spring starts sprouting all the, all the vegetation and then by summer, if they haven't taken care of it, uh, it obviously gets out of hand. And what uh, percentage of your, of your job, uh, your duties are involved with, with dealing with this particular issue and how, how, do you, how do you approach um, surveys or looking for these types of things? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what percentage of calls we deal uh, with weeds. In the summer uh, and spring and fall is when we deal with them and they're really high. They're high on the list of, of calls that we get uh, from the public generating and uh, asking us to have their neighbor take care of their weeds. So most of, most of the things are coming in by phone calls or you have folks out on the ground looking for problems or how does it right. work? Right, so um, typically people will call in and it'll go into a queue. If we finish off that queue and uh, no, the public hasn't required us for any kind of service. We do, we head straight to the alleys and we'll start creating our own calls. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for weeds, um, outstanding tall grass and anything that's poking through fences or obstructing vehicles. How much, how much time um, on a typical day or week do you usually spend with, uh, dealing with yard or weed issues? And uh, how do you, what are some of the approaches that you use to find out uh, about these problems? Every day is different for us, obviously. Um, it's hard to say exactly how much time we spend on weed issues. One day it could be a day filled with weed issues and another day we might not get to one property for that kind of thing. Uh, if there is a weed issue at a property where we've been called or we've created our own call, we will do our best to contact the homeowner or the active resident at that home and let them know what's going on in the alley or in their yard. Try to identify the, the weed and what they need to do to get rid of it and give them a time limit on when they have to do it by. And so how effective do you think Bylaw has been in, in keeping the weeds and unsightly yards under control? Uh, we ha can be very effective when it comes to, you know, asking people to cut their weeds and get rid of them. People typically do uh, comply with our request. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that the alley is their responsibility, not the city's. So, so that's part of it is just educating them? That's part of it them. is educating them. And then if we can pinpoint which uh, weed they have, if it's noxious or prohibitive noxious, then uh, we'll do that for sure. And yeah. Are they educate. sometimes surprised to find out that they have uh, a noxious uh, weed in their yard? Yeah, because they don't, they don't understand, right? Like they, don't, they don't get it. And a lot of times the, no the noxious weed is like a beautiful flower and they think, you know, why would I get rid of that? I love that. It's been growing here for 10 years. It's, you know, it's so pretty and 
I didn't realize, and yeah. now we're telling them, well, you got to get rid of it. That's a big problem with yeah. a lot of these plants. Yeah. Um, so do you work with anyone else in the city uh, to, to deal with this issue? Well, we work uh, with Parks and Recreation. They have an employee uh, that drives around and will spot problem areas that are private property. And uh, she'll call in a call for us uh, and let us know what's growing there and where it is so that we can go and deal with the, the issue on that property. And uh, we rely heavily on the community to call, to call in um, so that we know, because the city's pretty big and there are seven of us, so. So what, what's the best approach for a, a concerned citizen to take if, if they're finding some, some problem? The best thing would be to call our non-emergency complaint line, 403-529-8481. Um, have a specific address and like location, an actual address would be the most helpful, not just you know ten, the 600 block of 10th Street in the alley. That doesn't help us. The actual viable address is always the best route. Specifics are important. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't want to miss anything. And then what would you have to, what would you want to tell uh, the public about things that they can do to, to prevent issues from coming up? What, what, what are some proactive approaches that they can take? Well, they could spray so that it kills, kills the weeds. They could actively just, you know, when they're mowing their lawn every week, they could mow their alley and get rid of the weeds that are growing in there and just get their whippersnipper out along the fence lines and just keep it under control. That's super important. Yeah. And what's the importance for, for bylaw for this? Well, the importance would be, um, you know, the rest of the public. It's public interest because a lot of people take a lot of care in their property. Absolutely. and. They work hard and they spend a lot of money to keep it the way that they want to keep it. And they don't need a neighbor allowing a noxious or prohibited noxious weed to invade their home or their property or lawn or garden um, and have to do all the extra work that they've already done a second time to, to keep their property maintained. And then as far as the city is concerned, are, are there particular areas that are a, a little bit worse than other areas or is it pretty much a problem kind of throughout the city? It's a problem throughout the city. Uh, there, there are locations that are a little bit more um, common that we'll find calls on for, for the weeds and people not really taking care of the property um, than others. <clears throat> so we just do our best to try to cover the city as best we can, but we really need the calls to come in. Thank you, Barry Ann. So unfortunately, these noxious plants continue to be a big problem in our fair city. This particular species that we're looking at now with the beautiful purple flowers is called creeping bellflower. It is another plant that's listed in the noxious category, so it does have to be controlled. So it seems to be quite prevalent in Medicine Hat. It's a challenge to get rid of. The best way to control this particular plant is to keep pulling it and keep pulling it and eventually it will be gone. But it can grow easily in an alley and can spread quite rapidly. This is another really uh, bad uh, plant in the noxious category. It's called downy brome. It's a grass and you can really identify it easily because of its droopy seed heads which seem to hang down from the main part of the plant and it really enjoys disturbance. So any of the disturbed areas in and around the community you'll find this particular weed growing and once it gets out into wildlands, especially, it self-perpetuates. It dries earlier than normal grasses, than our native grasses, and it likes to burn. And then once the area burns, there's lots of downy brome seed, and it just becomes a huge monoculture. And it's not very palatable for 
cattle. So ranchers don't want it. So everyone, names can be deceiving. This, this species is called Canada thistle and it is definitely not from Canada. It's from Europe and Asia, just like many of the invasive plants that we have in our area. This one's classified as noxious, so it does need to be controlled. And we also need to be careful about differentiating this species from some of our native thistles. We do have some, some plants that are thistles that belong here in Alberta. It also shows the resili resiliency of these plants. This one's just growing right in the middle of a parking lot. And again, can act as a reservoir for the plant to escape into wild lands or agricultural lands. Vigilance needs to remain high for these particular species. These types of plants, the noxious plants, unfortunately, uh, they can spread from back alleys and from vacant lots and infest our natural areas and our agricultural lands, uh, causing a lot of problems for farmers and ranchers. And then they might also have to use herbicides, which can even impact the landscape further. And they can spread in a whole variety of ways of air, by animals, even by us. Now, if you want to know more about these particular plants or you have a complaint, uh, you can definitely get in touch with BioLaw directly through their non emergency uh, police phone number, which is 403 529 8481. Or you can always come down to the Nature Center and let us take a look at your plants. If you have photographs or even live specimens that you want us to see, and we can try to answer your questions and get you in touch with bylaws well. So with just a little bit of awareness, uh, some effort, we can control these plants and make the city a, a better place and keep them from spreading. Today we've found that there are lots of people involved in the battle against invasive species. We have governments who establish and enforce regulations to control these species. We have researchers who are finding little bugs that can help uh, control a patch of, of weeds. We have garden centers providing alternatives so that we can still enjoy our beautiful yard without spreading the problem. And we all can have a, a role to play too. We can notice and report any new patches of weeds. We can think about what we're growing in our yards. Maybe we can use some of these alternatives that were suggested earlier, or maybe we can look at growing wildflowers that actually belong here. And some of them are just gorgeous. Whatever the role that we take, I hope that we all can continue to work together the battle against invasive species will take all of us. If you'd like to talk more, come on down to the Nature Center. We're open Tuesday through Sunday, 9 to 5. Or you can give us a phone call, 529-6225. And of course, you can always catch up with us on Facebook and Twitter. However you get in touch with us, let's keep talking and battling the invasive species. See you soon.